Christmas. Christmas season always kind of comes up. And when I was younger, it was so almost magical and wonderful. And as I got older, Christmas became less and less uh, fun. And you know, for a while there, Christmas represented pain for me. It didn't, rep it didn't represent joy and peace and love. It represented pain. And I believe there's probably some folks in here where Christmas represents pain. And the gospel is this. That's the bad news. The good news is, God, you were able to restore my joy. You were able to restore and give me a family now that's whole again. You were able to give me a, a Sunday dinner. But for years, I didn't even have a dinner, much less a Sunday dinner. You were able to, to give life to a broken man, to a broken life, to a broken situation, to a broken family. <coughs> God, I believe that you give life. You are love. You bring light to the darkness. And God, for those that are here that are struggling, that this is a tough time for them, or just in life in general, God, I pray that this morning by your spirit, you would, you would breathe your life. You would envelop those individuals with your love. And God, for those of us that have experienced that love, God, would you remind us, would you keep us humble? Would you keep us ever seeking? Because I remember, God, when you reached out for me, when you chased me down when I was running from you, you chased me down when God ran. I'll never forget that, God. That's why I sing like I do, not because I'm spiritual or I'm the best singer ever or none of that. I don't care about any of that. But what I know is that I was lost and, God, I became found. What I know is that my heart was broken and I didn't think it would ever heal. God, you feel it. That's what I know. And that's what Christmas is to me. So God, when it comes time, God, yeah, I'm going to give you the glory and I'm going to worship and I'm going to sing. Because you're worth it. I bring my offering to you this morning, Jesus. And I lay it down to you. God, I thank you for all you've done in Jesus' name. Now the birth of Jesus Christ was as follows. When his mother Mary had been betrothed, engaged, promised, whatever word you want to use there, espoused to Joseph, before they came together, she was found to be with child by the Holy Spirit. And Joseph, her husband, being a righteous man, a man of integrity, a man living rightly before the Lord. And not wanting to disgrace her, the actual translation there is to disgrace her in a public way, desired to put her away secretly or silently. But when he considered this, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife. For that which has been conceived in her is of the Holy Spirit. She will bear, she will bear a son. And you shall call his name Jesus, for it is he who will save his people from their sins. Now all this took place that what was spoken by the Lord through the prophet might be fulfilled, saying, Behold, the virgin shall be with child, and shall bear a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which translated means God with us. And Joseph arose from his sleep, and did as the angel of the Lord commanded him, and took her as his wife, and kept her a virgin, until she gave birth to a son, and he called his name. Father, this morning, the Christ of Christmas. 
God, may your people rise up, not in an arrogant kind of way, not in a way, like Jim said, that says, look at me. But God, may we begin to get a glimpse of this Christ at Christmas in a way like we never have before. May it, may it energize us. May it cause us to see Christmas in just a little bit different way. May it cause us to live in a different way. God, it's my prayer that we this year would look at Christmas maybe like we've never seen before. Ask you, Lord, to show us Christmas. <laughs> God, just to be exalted this morning. God, a lot of other places are worshiping. Pastors are about to speak your word or the title of the Lord this morning. <coughs> My prayer that you would be exalted in those places this morning. And everything that takes place, God, that people might hear the truth today. God, give the word again, please. In Christ's name. Amen. Christmas. Now, what do you think about it? What do you do different now, if anything, than what you used to do? Uh, you know, is, is it different? Or is it the same old, same old, the, the same thing that you do? Or, or do you change it up just a little bit because of the celebration? The celebration of the Christ child. Do you take families and adopt them? Do you spend on other people? When you begin to think about this Christ of Christmas, the Word of God talks about the fact of Emmanuel, God with us, the incarnate God, that God came, the Son of God, God the Son came, in which we celebrate this time of Christmas. Now we know historians have told us, you know, Christmas is around our summertime, uh, or the birth of Christ is around our summertime, and uh, July of August, and we celebrate it, and if you listen to Patrick, or you go talk with him, Patrick has done an extensive study on Christmas, and spent three weeks of of teaching that over the last three weeks. He's done a great job in that. And I'm sure he'd share the notes with you. But go and look and how it all came about in the way that it has and what it means. It is significant to think about that because you think about the incarnate God, God the Son, that would come and change the world for all eternity's purpose. Something that the world couldn't comprehend and, and many today still all these years later, 2,000 plus years later, we still miss it. We, we don't comprehend the Christ of Christmas. This Christ that would offer change, that would literally offer transformation to every individual that would ever live. The Christ of Christmas. When you think about it this morning, I want you to think with me first about birth. The debatable birth. How can it be that the virgin shall be with child? The young woman who had never known a man. Some say that there was some kind of relation between God and Mary. Or whatever the case may be. The Word of God says that it was immaculate conception. Conception that being of the Holy Spirit. The Word of God says that she will be found with child by the Holy Spirit. When you think about this birth, there's no other birth like it. No other birth before, during, or since. When we think about this birth, the birth of the Christ child, the one where God himself became flesh, born through a virgin. Think about that. Think about the magnificence of that. Well, why, why would that ever happen? What, if somebody said, you know, why the virgin birth? What would your answer be? Undefiled. Ever been defiled. Cleanness, purity. God in himself. The touch of God. The plan of God. Yes. But so much more when you think about the miraculous touch of God. The miracle working of God. People say, well, I don't believe in miracles. I don't believe that that happened. When you take them and they see the birth of a baby, somebody said this the other day, said, you know, just in our presence, said, I just don't understand how folks look at the birth of a baby and still tell me there's no God. And when you walk around and you take a look and you see that little baby and how that little baby can be tumbling around in water nine months, in a matter of a few seconds, be breathing the air. Miraculous touch of God. Birth of a little baby. And it's 
miraculous as it is, it still doesn't match to the miraculous birth of the Lord Jesus Christ, to which a prophet had prophesied some seven to eight hundred years prior to that the virgin shall be the child. You shall call him man with us. And the plan of God that was fulfilled. And not only just the plan, but think about the fact of this birth bringing light into a dark world. 400 years, approximately, God had not spoken a word. 400 years. Why, why had God not spoken a word? Because man had, had so turned away from God. Man had wouldn't follow God. They had turned totally away from God. God just shut it down. There was man. And mankind no hope until the birth. Until the birth of the Christ child. That the significance of that goes so far that the hope that was brought through this one birth, the direction that would be given through the birth of this Christ child. Born in a cattle stall. Laid in a cattle trough. Why? Because there was no room for them in the end, the birth. No, don't take it lightly. When somebody talks about Christmas, that you can explain the birth, that you can touch on their conscience about the birth of the Lord Jesus Christ, the greatest birth of all time, the birth that gained great attention. The Word of God says there were shepherds in the field watching over their flocks at night. And the angel of the Lord appeared to him and told him about the story of the birth. When we think about the birth, this is like no other birth before, that you and I are to share the story. The Word of God says after it was announced that the shepherds made haste, they hurried, that they, they, they dropped what they were doing to go to the place in Bethlehem. And there they would see the Christ. Think about it. Think about the opportunities that Christians have, that people have today to draw into the presence of God. So many times we just take it so much. This birth, the Christ of Christmas, offers us so much. The coming of God to earth, the, the fact that it opened up redemption to you and I, that we had no hope. The folks who were living to that day, there was no hope. And Jesus says that you must be born to you. Oh, and you go look at the Gospels, and you'll find the story of Nicodemus, of course, and Nicodemus talks to him. And how can this be? This, how, how, how can, do, do we enter back into the mother's womb? The explanation is you know you must be born of water, which is a physical birth. And then born of the Spirit, being born again, believing that Jesus is God's Son, believing in this birth, this miraculous birth, that God's Son literally came from heaven's glory and was born in a cattle stall, that was born and raised and lived 33 years. And he walked this earth for you. The birth, it's like no other birth, it's the birth of the newborn King, Jesus Christ. It's the Christ of Christmas. You and I have a story to tell, and, and we can start by telling the birth. Somebody might say, well, I don't have a testimony. If you're born again, you've got a testimony. You can tell about the birth. You can tell about Jesus Christ. You can tell about your new birth in Christ. You can tell about the significance of being born again and the before and the after and how you were. You just heard Jim in his prayer talk about being before and what God did to transform him and change him and give him something that he never expected. There's testimony after testimony after testimony in this building to where you can say, this is where I was, but I met Jesus and Jesus changed my life and here's where I am today. The birth. The second thing this morning is not only the birth, what about the battle? See, the battle is where many of us are today, or we know many people that are amidst the battle. <clears throat> We've been talking about the battle all year long, the battle that's raging in our life, and the fact that you and I need to be straining ahead, that we need to be pressing on toward the goal of God, to win the prize in Christ Jesus. 
to know that we're to love others as Jesus loved us. And, and there's a battle there. Some people that they go through their life with hatred that's built up. Hatred that's in their life for one person or against another person. And, and, and it just consumes their life. Hatred. Like that? Somebody in this building? <clears throat> to where hatred is built up and that loving others as Jesus loves us doesn't even come into your ballpark. That there's a battle that's playing out. And you think about the battle of Christmas. Think about Mary, the mother of the Christ child, the virgin, the angel comes upon her. You'll be with the child. Hey, what? How, how can this be? The battle begins to start inside our life. How, how can this ever happen to me? Because I've never been to a man. And, and what is Joseph going to think? And all of the emotions begin to run. There's a battle that goes on in Mary's life. And, and then what about Joseph himself? What, what about the daddy? What, what would Joseph think? And, and, and so Joseph is battling. We know the word of God says that, and it doesn't go into all the detail, but think about it. Ken and I were talking, Jim and, and guys in prayer time this morning. You know, we forget that these guys are in the midst of real battle. They're, they're not elevated on a platform somewhere. They're just like you and I. And there was a battle. Mary was thinking, well, what's, what's Joseph going to do? How's Joseph going to react? Then the angel appears to Joseph. And Joseph has to deal with this same information. Mary, pregnant, the, the one that I this promised to me. How, how am I going to put her away? I, I, I don't want to make her a public spectacle. And there's a battle going on in his mind. God spoke to both of them. He said, Mary, this is going to be okay. So the Holy Spirit of God. Not only that, Mary, you're high in faith. Can, can I say something to you this morning, church, in the midst of the battle? The Holy Spirit wants to speak to our life and say, you're high. You're high in faith. Joseph, you don't have to worry about Mary. What is taking place is a result, a direct result of the Holy Spirit of God. She's special. And Joseph, you're going to be the dad of Christ. Wow. Think about the battle. God, how am I going to do this? The, the Christ child? I, I've got to be the earthly dad of the Christ the, the battle that literally begins to build in the midst of life. It's going to be okay because the Holy Spirit of God. But there's a greater battle when you think about the Lord Jesus Christ as he began to grow. And even Mary and Joseph, see, I think sometimes we get in our mind that because he was Jesus, that Mary and Joseph didn't have their issues. We have at least one issue there where he was at the temple and they left him. Anybody ever left your child? When I get ready to our hand. We got all the way home one night. We got caught. Had to go back and get him. He didn't, have, he didn't care. He was in a good place. Very chosen in the midst of the battle. See, they battle just like you and I's parents. The same issues. We, we forget that Jesus is the Son of God, but yet the Son of Man. He grew as a little boy. They had the same battles as you. The diapers, the nursing, the teaching, the admonishing. All of that, the, the battle that was taking place, the ups and downs of life. We don't know a lot about those. But they had those battles. And sometimes I think we want to elevate the story to get it above and beyond. No, bring it down to where you are. Joseph and Mary were 
ordinary people, just like you and me. And they battled just like we do. And the Lord Jesus grew. And he knew his mission. He knew why he was coming. He knew that he was going to be born and then he was going to live. And he knew he was going to be rejected. And where he went, he was constantly rejected. Look back. This Christ of Christmas, the one that we elevate, that so many people today, we're not careful, we're keeping in them little cradles. But he got out of the cradle, and he got off the mother's milk, and he got on the meat of everyday life, and he faced the issues that we face every And he did it to the glorification of God. This Christ of Christmas. Matter of fact, his battles may even win a little work more than us because when you begin to account, you find that just when he began to start his earthly, his earthly ministry, that Satan took him firsthand. Took him to the pinnacle. He said, all these kings. He tipped him with food. He, he tempted him to jump off. Did all kinds of stuff. Jesus stood on what? The Word of God. He stood on the Word of God. He, he, he didn't say, well, I'm the Son of God. He, he stood on the Word of God. Satan already knew who he was. Matter of fact, Satan had encountered him who knows before a time in heaven's glory. Don't forget that. He knew who Jesus was. Satan was cast out of heaven. He knew who Jesus was. He knew the power of God. He knew the touch of God and the salvation. He knew what was going to take place when all Jesus had to bow. Think about it as a carpenter's son. How many men have ever hit your fingers with the hammer? How many of you ever said bad words when you've done it? See how laughing? This is the truth, right? You know what Jesus did? He hit his finger with the hammer. But he didn't say the bad <laughs> You learn. Jesus learned somehow it made me think that, you know, he, he hit every nail just right. He didn't bend the nail. He ran every saw just like he was supposed to saw. He learned. But there was a battle every day of his life. And, and we need to understand that when we think about who he was. And, and the fact of the rejection. Jesus did all he did knowing that he was going to be rejected by those closest to him. See, so many times we forget about the human side. And, and in the midst of the Christ of Christmas, in the midst of the Christmas season, just be you. That's what I want you to see. When you're in Walmart, be you. If you're a child of God, be you. If you put the t-shirt on, please be honoring to Jesus. If you got the bumper sticker on, you got the magnetic sticker on, sometimes it has to remind us not to give out the road range. <coughs> Matthew speaking. I told you I don't care if you got in the car. Just trying to be real. Because every one of us were in the battle. <clears throat> you know, you got the thing, I love Jesus, and you flip somebody off. What does it say? Are you telling them to shove it with your little motion? Or you drive out of the parking lot to do that? See, there's a battle going on, and you and I make the choice. And, and I'm telling you, when you think about the Jewish people, they came against Jesus. They were looking for a king to come in on a horse, not a baby coming in a cattle fall. It's a battle. Life is so full of battles. Why? Because we live in a mess of The world was messed up when Jesus was here. And it's messed up even more. 
we deteriorated even more. And, and, and life is full of broken lives. But I want you to understand something this morning when you think about the Christ of Christmas. He battled the battles. And he won. And I'm telling you, you and I go battle the battles. In the end, we win. No matter what's going on right now, no matter if we're trying to overcome some kind of temptation or hurt or things that are going on in our life, disappointments, all that kind of stuff. We're in this battle. And as a child of God, we win. He wants us to be determined. He wants us to act on direction <coughs> and on his strength. Why? Because the birth is not like it. And I tell you, when God changes our life, it's not like it. It's a transformation that nobody else can explain. So many times they want to look back and look at the old you, and they can't even begin to understand the new you. That's how much difference it is. Then there's a battle. The Christ of Christmas, the birth, the battle, the midst of the battle where you and I are, the, the fact that we're pressing on toward the go to win the prize of God in Christ Jesus. And here's the last thing. This Christ of Christmas didn't end with the birth. He knew it wasn't going to end with the birth. He knew the battle was coming. He knew where he was headed. He knew that the cross would be his final moments of life on this earth. He knew he was going to go to an empty tomb. But then here comes the blessing. You see, we got the birth, and we got the battle. Jesus battled life right up to the cross. The fact that he was in Gethsemane and he was praying, Lord, let this cup pass for me. But Lord, if it's not your will, if it's not my will be done, your will be done. And if it's your will, just, just let it happen. But God, I'm going to do what you want me to do. There was a battle to the cross. Father, why have you forsaken me? See, listen, Christians, this morning. Don't stop with the birth. Don't, don't keep him in the manger. Because if it was in the manger and the birth was all we had, we're defeated. We have no hope. It goes so much more beyond that. And so you have the birth. You've got the battle. You've got the blessing. And when you think about from the standpoint of Christmas, 33 years after Jesus knew that he was going to be strung out on the cross. Naked. Naked. <clears throat> Disgraced. The little baby that everybody was cooing and eyeing over would be beaten beyond recognition. Crown of thorns that would be shoved upon his head. Blood dripping from the cross. He knew that. But he did it as the blessing for you and me and all mankind. All people thought it was over when he said it is finished and he died on the cross. Nicodemus and the guys took him down and they anointed his body and put him in the tomb. And three days later, the blessing. The blessing. See, if it would have stopped in the, in the manger, we're in trouble. No hope. If it had ended on the cross when he cried out he's finished, we're in trouble. No hope. But Christmas continued to ride on that. And he got up in the grave. And he extends the blessing to you and I. The blessing of the birth, the new birth in Christ, the blessing of the battle that he says, I'll never forsake you, I'll never leave you, that I will be with you always, even until the end of the earth, I'll go with you, I'll be right there. He defeated death in the grave. That's all part of Christmas. <clears throat> It's all part of the Christ at Christmas for you and I. The Christ of the grave. The Christ who would get up. The Christ who would rise up and give all of the victory. The Christ who would some 40 days later ascend into heaven. Take his seat at the right hand of the Father. And he would look out on his people. And one day, his 
morning interest. He's looking forward to you and I coming. He's looking forward to the day that he takes us home. Or the day that he comes back and gets us. I don't know what's going to happen first. But where are you this morning? When you think about the birth, <clears throat> the new birth, has Jesus been born afresh and anew in your life? Have you transformed your life? Is the old gone away and the new come because of a miraculous touch of God? Are you in the midst of the battle? Are you in the midst of the battle because, number one, you received that new birth and Jesus is born in your life and you're battling every day to live for him? Are you on the other side of the battle? Or temptation to beat you alive? I'm never sold out to Jesus Christ. And you got that battle going on. I want you to know this morning, he wants you to have the blessing. It's the blessing of eternal life. It's found in Jesus. It's found in Jesus alone. Oh, what a Savior. Oh, what a blessing. He's Christ for Christmas. He wants to change your life. Will leave 